Well, I've got uh, several projects I've been working on at the moment. Uh, one that's consuming quite a lot of my time is about Japan. It's about the anniversaries of the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And we're doing a big project uh, around the trees that survived those bombs. And that's a project that's going to go into next year. COVID-19 has gone in the way of that. And we worked with a Japanese crew who did some filming and some sound recordings of the trees now, including using sensors to capture some of the sounds from within the trees. Um, I've also got a new album that I'm working on and uh, a third project that I'm working on is working with chemical reactions uh, in the studio. I've worked a lot with a company called Vision Research who make amazing, make some of the best slow motion cameras in the world and I'm really interested in capturing imagery in slow motion because there's something about slowing down a moment in time because as humans we tend to be rushing from one thing to the next and something can happen very very quickly and we've missed it and this idea of capturing something that might be a second long in reality or might be a fraction of a second and sitting with it and actually enjoying it and watching it unfold in a way that we wouldn't ordinarily experience I, f I find fascinating um, I also work a lot with the, the with different scales and manipulating how we see something, maybe something the size of a coin and I'm filling the frame with it and there's a lot of ambiguity in my work and I like to intercut maybe a, a shot from a helicopter with a shot taken in a petri dish so you get this sense that uh, you don't really know which, which landscape is which and we can start to see how they mimic and mirror each other these different landscapes on very different scales. Well when I'm behind a lens or when I've got a pair of headphones on it does start to change how I'm experiencing the environment I'm in. I also work a lot with uh, different kinds of lenses. I work on very small scales. I film in Petri dishes and I'm working with, uh, with super macro with bellows and I'm getting it as close as I can and I, I work a lot with technology where I like to, I like to work on the edge of what is possible with the technology. So if you go any further, then it becomes unworkable. So in a, a particular case of working with a lens, when you start working with bellows, extending the lens essentially, you start losing a lot of light. You also get an incredibly narrow, very shallow depth of field. So only a very small sliver of the image is in focus. So it makes it very difficult to work in that, those kind of ways. But it can be fascinating to see what the end results are because you start to focus on something that's minute and that can take over a whole image and be an incredibly powerful presence when it's something you would have never seen normally. I also work with um, a lot of audio tech, cutting edge audio technology and on the Japan project uh, we're working with accelerometers which are highly sensitive sensors that we attach to the trees and they pick up minute vibrations within the trunks of the trees. Absolutely, there's something, uh, I, natural phenomena is very important to me, that the, the idea of chance and, and uh, something coming in that disrupts your plans. I, I try and use that a lot in my creative work. So whether it's working with musicians in the studio where one of my albums was called The Rooms and I created a sonic room with soundscaping and, and musical elements for each of the pieces and then the musicians would enter that room and they would explore it musically in whatever way they chose. I picked those musicians very carefully but I gave them a lot of freedom. If they, if they walked out the door or they jumped out the window of that, that virtual room, I would bring them back into the space. But how they actually explored it was in, entirely up to them. And then I would use the elements that I wanted later on. I guess I'm moving away a little bit from uh, thinking of projects as uh, fixed in their, in their shape and in their design and working much more with sort of building blocks and ideas and components that can come together. So whether that might be uh, sonic elements, some of my sound design, my live music, uh, performance, uh, my visual work, installation work and how those can come together into different shapes and different forms depending on the environment and, and the, the, the scenario they're used for. Um, 
I think the idea of working from project uh, in a fixed form from beginning to end is getting trickier at the moment. Well, we're all having to, uh, or most of us are having to work a lot more with uh, the virtual world and how we can actually interact with communities and fan bases and people interested in our work around the world. It's also a time for, for us to sort of think about how we can develop new strands of work because we're locked down and we're able to concentrate on developing new work that might be of interest when things start to open up. So those of us who have a little bit of freedom, a little bit of time to experiment, that's an opportunity to do that. But I think one of the things is this thing of building communities and interacting with people uh, around the world as well, because I'm, I'm looking a lot further, uh, my uh, creative communities, I'm looking a lot further than I was before, because um, it, it is an international market now, and, and there are opportunities maybe in Hong Kong or Singapore, or, and it's not just on my doorstep. I remember going to India in 1989, India and Nepal, and filming uh, on Super 8 and also recording sounds on a Walkman. Uh, this was one of my first portable recorders I had. And I was recording all kinds of soundscapes around India, street sounds and uh, natural soundscapes. And I was also filming on Super 8. And I was bringing these two things together when I came back to my studio in ways that might be unusual. And so I was taking a sound from one place and bringing it together with an image from another place. And I've done that all along, really. I'm less interested in capturing sync sound from something that's happening in front of me because I'm, I'm really interested in this, this breaking up the connections we have between what we see and what we hear and changing how we see by playing something different different uh, sonically because I'm very aware that emotionally we sound really taps into us in a way that imagery doesn't and you can really affect how someone ex responds to an image um, with a, a different soundscape and this is something filmmakers have been using for generations someone like Alfred Hitchcock with the shower scene and Psycho if you watch that image imagery without the sound it would have a certain power over you but if you just listen to the soundscape knowing what it related to it i guarantee it would have a stronger effect and um, the way i've worked with uh, found sound with sound recordings that i've made around the world is is getting more sophisticated i have uh, technology that is way beyond what I was uh, had available uh, way back and I'm working at resolutions that are way beyond what I was doing then and with in particular with the Japan project that we're doing at the moment we've been working at uh, 192 kilohertz which is extremely high uh, frequency uh, sampling rate and that means we can capture audio frequencies that are way beyond human hearing and that is allowing me to start picking different parts of the audio spectrum and pitching them into human range. And, and it's giving me a lot more scope. So I'm not just capturing what, I was, what I'm hearing in the soundscapes and the places I'm in. I'm actually capturing that's stuff that's way beyond my human hearing as well. I think we, we need to uh, tread very carefully with how we interact with our planet. And this is really obvious at the moment with the level of damage that we have caused since the Industrial Revolution, but arguably since we started to develop farming methods and animal husbandry going way back when we started to harness the energies and the resources of the planet in a way where we felt we were starting to get in charge rather than living in harmony with our environments. Now that has caused a lot of destruction and potentially will destroy us in the end. I think something like nuclear energy, uh, the atomic bombs, is a, an example where we, we felt we were harnessing something very powerful and we were in control of it largely. But, but a lot of damage was caused by that in ways that were unpredictable. And still going forward, radiation is doing that. So we, we need to be very careful and we need to not overstep our potential as, as humans because we are very much part of what's going on rather than separate to it. I think language is a problematic word here because it definitely alludes to the kind of highly complex language we've developed as humans where we can convey ideas 
and concepts as well as commands and information. Within the natural world, there is undoubtedly communication going on. They've proved that trees do communicate with each other through their root structures and fungal networks. And they can uh, pass on information about pests, pests and that, are, that are coming to attack them, and they can cause uh, chemical reactions and also emit sounds that are beyond our level of hearing, which can be picked up by other trees and the other trees can take action against what is coming. So that, that kind of communication is, is happening and there are many ways that species interact with each other, but not in a traditional human type language. I think for me, it, it's really about listening in a different kind of way. I, I try and get my anal analysis out of the way, my analytical mind out of the way when I'm working. I, I very much get in the moment of what I'm experiencing and whether I'm looking through the lens or whether I'm listening on headphones to what I'm recording in a soundscape. I'm trying to get out of the way of analyzing that because I don't see that as helpful. So in that way, I am very much listening to nature and, and I'm learning from what nature. I've had experiences with orchids where I'm very aware that there's different times that the orchids are, are more open to being filmed. That may seem rather bizarre, but it, it, there's a different energy in the space.